Hey there fellow adult collectors, welcome back, David Eon here with another virtual video catalog tour. This time we'll be taking a look at the Remco 1978 Toy Fair catalog. 1978 Remco, which is going to be a lot shorter than some of the other virtual catalog tours that I've done, simply because this is not a big catalog. If I remember correctly, there's only like 24 pages in here. And this used to belong to Joanna's Dolls and Things in Kansas City, Missouri. I don't know if they still exist, but I've got their catalog. It's mine now, and I'm going to share it with you. So let's go ahead and get started looking through here. And this is actually kind of interesting. The very first thing that jumps out here is not a toy, but Remco's advertising plan, which they put right in the catalog as opposed to printing up a separate sheet which is often what some of these uh, toy distributors do. So Remco 1978 advertising plan and it tells you how much they're willing to spend on advertising on what. So orange is spot TV which basically means like UHF stations. Blue is network television, ABC, NBC, CBS because that's all there was back then. And then P, printed advertising campaign if they put a P next to it, so advertisements and comic books and such. And four stars is up to a million dollars. So, for example, the energized Spider-Man up there, they're willing to spend up to a million dollars, including printing advertising, on both UHF and regular television spots for several months from between the middle of July to the middle of December. Most likely the network television spots that they were eating up were going to be Saturday morning spots because that's mostly when young children would have been watching. But we'll go ahead and get started and we start off with a bang because there are your motorized Spider-Man toys and accessories. So Amazing Energized Spider-Man and Green Goblin, Spider-Man's worst adversary, also energized. I think you put a C battery in both of these so because they had a climbing action. Essentially, the arm swings up and down, the one arm that's sticking up there. The articulation on these are pretty bad. He's articulated at the shoulders and neck only, and the arm swings up and down. And there's a separate plug. If you notice, like, on his waist, there's a hole and a switch and the hole is where that piece plugs into and it's like a little flashlight with a cord that's too small for him to hold it and the Green Goblin has basically the same accessory he's got a hole in him it's not visible like it is on the Spider-Man it's probably on his back and then there's his plug-in little flashlight and he comes with a purse basically now what I do like these are 12 inch figures by the way what I do like is that Remco went through the trouble to show you packaging detail which most of the time these companies didn't bother to do so they're showing you right off what it's gonna look like in the box and I like that I like that I like seeing what the box is supposed to look like web climber and then down here energized spider-man accessory pack and essentially this is a trap. It's like a spider trap. So if somebody is standing in the middle of it, if you look at this one, you can see the elastics because it comes with a couple of elastics you put on it and they stand in the middle of the trap. It pops up and grabs them. And then it comes with a little fake web and a gun. You ever see Spider-Man with a gun? But that plugs into his little waist socket also and it says it fires a beam of light basically it's a flashlight and then the camera has like a projectile so it's like a little rocket camera stuff that spider-man would never do basically another thing spider-man would never do is fly a helicopter I don't even think he could afford a helicopter but there was a spider copter <laughs> and there is of course the box art again they're showing you the packaging details which I do like that in this catalog and one unique function about this copter 
is it feeds off of the Spider-Man figure. So there is a plug where you can plug the copter into him and it will make the rotor turn and a light come on in the front. I don't know how well those functions actually worked, especially off of a C battery in the 70s, but they're there. And then of course the Green Goblin who evidently is Spider-Man's worst adversary according to Remco. Again also only jointed at the neck and shoulders. He doesn't do much folks. Another look at his accessories. And then his packaging, which I notice it looks like they took a picture of some damaged packaging. It looks like he's got a crunched corner there. <laughs> Come on, Remco. You could have done better than that. Hey, I'd be happy to find a Green Goblin in the box in this kind of condition nowadays. It is not easy. None of this, none of what you just saw in these two pages is by any means easy to find nowadays. Power Command Radio Control Donut Wheelie, and that is a radio control device, and I guess you press the button and it just spins in a circle. Is that the idea? There's not even a picture of the toy. It's a concept drawing, and that means it may have never been produced. I don't know. I'd have to go and check, but sometimes in these catalogs you do see toys that never got made. Bat away, pitching machine, wiffle ball, pitcher. That'd be kind of neat to have for if you're practicing. And there is the packaging details. Bat away. And then over here, the CSF, which is the copters. And it's a little helicopter playset. It's got a wired remote. Basically, it spins around in a circle and goes up and down. And you can use the little chopper to pick things up. You see that it's just captured Dr. Octopus there. There's a little cityscape on the ground. And there's the kingpin. So you use Spider-Man's helicopter to grab people from one spot and dump them on another. And there's the box art for this. There's the Batman CSF copter. And you probably hear my cat. He's in here trying to get my attention. He's making noise. And you can pick up your criminals there, the Joker, the Riddler, the Penguin, and drop them on top of the Gotham City Jail. The Batcopter. And then probably most famously, the USS Enterprise. Essentially the same toy over and over again, just a different design. Be quiet, Crumb. He is noisy today. And instead of box art, though, they just have a picture of the toy, which kind of surprises me that they didn't sketch out something for the box and just elected to take a picture there. Ray guns, basically flashlights, but flashlights with a noisemaker inside. It says Batman Bat Ray Project a Light Gun. So it shines a light and it makes a noise. But that's still pretty damn cool and I'd love to have one. <laughs> I really would. Spider-Man Stingray, same type of toy, a light and sound little gun. That's kind of cool too. I like that. See, all stuff I would get. And you know, they don't make toy guns really anymore either. And the Star Trek Phaser Projecta Light Gun, same concept. That sort of resembles to me the Mego gun. They had a, a Mego Phaser with a little target game thing that they did. That's kind of what that looks like to me. And then over here, the utility belts. And 
even though they've got utility belts for people who didn't wear them, it was just a way to market to children. Spider-Man utility belt, he's got a little watch and a little radio there. Stuff that Spider-Man would never use in real life. Batman utility belt, well at least Batman actually would use a utility belt. So that kind of makes sense. I bet you that one's really popular. Wonder Woman utility belt, and that's not really a utility belt though. It's got a headband, wristbands, a belt, and a jump rope. And that's literally what it says in the description over here. See, jump rope included. Magic jump rope, excuse me. But that's not really a utility belt, Remco. I don't know what you're trying to pull. And then a Star Trek utility belt, and that's supposed to be Kirk there, I guess. And it looks like Kirk's got a rifle or something. And there's no rifle in the package. <laughs> but you've got a little tricorder and a phaser, or a disc shooting phaser. There's a package of discs there. That'd be really cool. I would love to collect these. That would be really neat. And a Mickey Mouse utility belt, because what the hell? Why not? We got a Mickey Mouse license from Disney. We may as well do something with it. And he's got some pretty cool stuff, actually. A little shovel and a, and a hatchet and a canteen and such. <laughs> That's kind of neat. I would want that. I'd, I'd like to have all five of those, really. All of this stuff so far. System 7. Seven-Way Task Force. Another toy gun. And I'll remind you again, they really don't make toy guns anymore. It's passe now. It's fallen out of the public interest. Says, the ring is the key. Reflector and message decoder. Detachable periscope. Telescoping sight scope. Missile launcher and parachute launcher. Now come on, tell me that doesn't look like a lot of fun. Wouldn't you have loved to have run around with that when you were a kid? As a matter of fact, that kind of looks like what Kirk is holding there. What do you think? A little subliminal advertising, Remco? What are you up to there? And then the Batman Trick Track, which is just a series of tracks with some cardboard cutout backdrops and a little car. So you can drive them around Gotham City. That's a very big penguin there. Moving on to dolls. And there is Baby This and That, which according to their advertising campaign, they were willing to spend quite a bit advertising this. It has a function, I believe it's a pneumatic function, where you squeeze her foot and her arm goes up and down. And so you can simulate her using her little phone or feeding herself with a spoon or brushing her teeth. So you squeeze her foot and her arm just pumps. And that's her box. We're showing boxes again. And then a three-in-one play bench for baby this and that. So it's an accessory for the doll where you can have her sitting at a desk like she's at school doing whatever a doll would do at school. Hello, dolly. And this is actually a very interesting toy because the way this works is you take an existing telephone receiver, unplug it from the phone and plug it into the doll. Like what this little girl is doing here. The doll has four uh, AA batteries in it and essentially you talk into the phone receiver and it comes out of the doll. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. The Proud Family just a series of dolls. It kind of looks like the Sunshine Family to me from Mattel. Proud Family and it is sold as a complete family. If you look here you see mom, dad, and baby. 
are all in the same package and there is an accessory that comes with it a dress for mom I guess and a little book the whole family one package they must be proud I Dream of Jeannie obviously Barbara Eden which like many of the things in the Remco catalog is not that easy to find anymore this is uh, aftermarket pretty rare to find still in the box as is the little bottle playset and she's not a big doll it's about six and a half inches tall so about 12th scale 1 12th scale even though she looks like a doll not an action figure and you see on the other page is a bunch of fashions I do not think that Remco made any of these fashions I know Ideal made fashion for the I Dream of Genie doll but I don't think Remco made these I don't think they ever got past sketches really not that you ever saw the Barbara Eden character wearing hardly anything but the genie costume anyway and it says games 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 and there's a picture of their basic doll assortment and yeah there was a black version of the doll but they didn't show it in the rest of the catalog which is kind of surprising because usually they would showcase something like that in these catalogs caviar the elegant challenge the elegant challenge I don't think I've ever seen that game and the great stamp machine that has a bunch of what look like whoopee cushions hooked up to hoses and I guess you're supposed to stomp on it and try to knock your balls into the center cup looks like a toy that could be very easily broken by small children <laughs> preschool birthday party Mickey Mouse and that is a big doll goodness how tall is that it doesn't really say but it looks like it's about two feet tall and it has a pneumatic action where you know I guess you squeeze his stomach and he can blow a whistle or blow the little uh, tickler or evidently even blow bubbles that looks like a little bubble toy so party Mickey Mouse birthday party Mickey Mouse with some minor articulation there that's pretty neat and the mouse power ranch mouse power ranch and they're not kidding because that is a buff Mickey Mouse right there <laughs> he looks like he works on a ranch he's got a little uh, Jeep with a horse and trailer and a hay baler horse and wagon that's kinda neat and you know I'm a fan of vintage play sets actually LPH and I both are we both like vintage play sets mouse power vehicle assortment again some very buff looking Mickey mouses and then Mickey's tricky stunt shooter where he launches this little car through the hoop and you know if you're wondering what that is his arm kinda spins around the one arm you, you turn it like a key and then when you push his ear it releases it and the arm spins around and a power castle that's kinda neat not seeing any other characters except for Mickey though
But then over here, we have some action figures. And these are five points of articulation and about five and a half inches tall. Mickey Mouse fun car. So Mickey Mouse has a jalopy there with a working horn, it looks like. Little toy maker vehicles. So you can build them up and tear them down, I guess. And then the actual carded action figures. Mickey, Minnie, and Donald. And that looks very similar to the Knickerbocker, Raggedy Ann, and Andy action figures. Don't know if you ever saw those. That one comes with what looks like a bunch of tools. And then Minnie looks like she has a pergola. What is that? <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be. And that was the last page, folks. So what do you think? Actually, a lot of the stuff that's in here is pretty hard to find now. Pretty rare. I bet you LPH would like these. The carded figures. Did you see anything here that you liked? That if you saw it for sale somewhere, you would get it if it was reasonably priced. Because I'm sure that many of these things aftermarket they're not going to be cheap like those utility belts and these guns I bet you none of that's cheap aftermarket but I would love to get these myself I could I could see a display of these on the wall if you know what I mean what are your thoughts you remember these toys did you have any of these as a child do you have them now? Did you ever go back and find them again? Would you? Is there something here you never saw before that you're like, wow, I'm inspired. I'd like to go and get that. Tell us about it in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope that you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff. Check out some of our other videos. If you wanted to see more catalog tours, we got them. Vintage showcases, modern unboxings, toy industry discussions. I had these once upon a time. I'd love to have them again. Part of the collection that I lost many years ago. Find us on Instagram, open by chance on Instagram. And what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.